This video will walk you through how to ensure proper calibration of your Progeny Vantage with digital cephalometric attachment. Before conducting any service or maintenance operations, always refer to the appropriate technical documentation for the complete list of instructions, safety alerts, and sequence of procedures. It is important that you verify that the Vantage Panoramic is functional before you start the calibration process by completing this pre-checklist, and be sure to perform each of the items which will be discussed in further detail in the next sections. Check that Device Suite 2.8.3.0 or later is installed, the RTC version 3.8 or higher is installed, ensure that in the System Center the CEPH related parameter value is 0. Verify the 0 pin positions on the X, Y and R axes and then check the panoramic collimator verification shot. We will now begin the pre-check process in the following sections. First, verify device suite 2.8.3.0 or later is installed on the control panel of the Vantage unit. Start by selecting options on the lower right of the Vantage touch display. Select service on the lower left. Enter 77469 and select OK. Select the system information symbol on the left or bottom as shown. Select System Center. If the Vantage Touch panel is not displayed, place your finger on the image and slide it left or right until the Vantage Touch panel is displayed. Verify that the device suite is version 2.8.3.0 or higher. If the device suite is not updated with this version or later, please contact Tech Support for further instructions. Otherwise, continue on to the pre-check for RTC version. Starting from where you check the device suite, verify that the RTC version 3.8 or higher is installed. Place your finger on the image and slide it left or right until the real-time controller is displayed and look for the RTC version number as indicated here. If the version is not 3.8 or higher, contact Tech Support for further instructions. Otherwise, continue on to the pre-check for Ceph parameter value. If the device suite version 2.7.1.0 or lower is installed on the machine prior to upgrading to version 2.8.3.0 as completed earlier in the device suite pre-check step, you will need to verify the Ceph parameters. On the touch screen, look at the Ceph left, Ceph top, Ceph bottom, Ceph C arm, and Ceph transit values and make sure they are zero. If these values are not zero, contact Tech Support for further instructions. If these values are correct, press Close, Exit, and wait until the collimator stops moving. Then continue on to the pre-check for zero pin positions for X, Y, and R axes. To begin the process of verifying the zero pin positions on the X, Y, and R axes, remove the pan bite piece chin rest, and drop the wands to a downward position. Then use the up-down control buttons to position the unit to its lowest height and then remove the overhead arm cover. If you receive an error message when using the up-down control buttons, you will need to raise or lower the unit in service screen. To do this, go to the service screen and select the column portion of the PAN device. Then select the Service column, select Move to Lower Limit, and verify that the status text displays the Moving to Lower Limit position message. Once the unit finishes moving into the lower limit position, select Finish twice to exit. Aligning the x-axis. On the service screen, select the overhead arm and perform the axis service and diagnostics task. Select the X-axis. Select the Move to Zero and wait for the X-ray device to stop moving. Insert the medium alignment pin in the zero position hole, confirming it inserts fully. If the pin inserts fully, select Finish to return to the service screen. 
Remove the pin. If the pin does not insert fully, proceed with the next set of instructions. When the x-axis pin does not fully insert, manually move the overhead arm until the medium alignment pin fits in the zero position hole. The overhead arm can be moved using the column keys or by turning the screw manually. Remove the pin. On the operator panel, tap Set Zero Alignment and tap Yes to confirm. Wait for the panoramic x-ray device to stop moving. On the operator panel, tap Move to Home and wait for the movement to stop. On the operator panel, tap Move to Zero and wait for the movement to stop. When the movement has stopped, insert the pin in the zero position hole, confirming that it inserts fully. Remove the pin. On the operator panel, tap Finish. Next, move on to verify the Y-axis alignment. Select the Y-axis. Select the Move to Zero and wait for the X-ray device to stop moving. Insert the large alignment pin in the zero position hole, confirming that it inserts fully. The pin should insert about an inch. If the pin inserts fully, select Finish, remove the pin. If the pin does not insert fully, remove the pin and follow these next instructions. Manually move the overhead arm until the large alignment pin fits in the zero position hole. Remove the pin. On the operator panel, tap Set Zero Alignment and tap Yes to confirm. Wait for the panoramic x-ray device to stop moving. On the operator panel, tap Move to Home and wait for the movement to stop. On the operator panel, tap Move to Zero and wait for the movement to stop. When the movement has stopped, insert the pin in the zero position hole, confirming that it inserts fully. Remove the pin. On the operator panel, tap Finish. Now, move on to verify the R-axis alignment. Select the R-axis. Select Move to Zero and wait for the X-ray device to stop moving. Insert the medium alignment pin in the zero position hole, confirming that it inserts fully. If the pin inserts fully, select Finish to return to the service screen. If the pin does not insert fully, follow the next instructions. Manually move the overhead arm until the medium alignment pin fits in the zero position hole. Remove the pin. On the operator panel, tap Set Zero Alignment. Tap Yes to confirm. Wait for the panoramic x-ray device to stop moving. On the operator panel, tap Move to Home and wait for the movement to stop. On the operator panel, tap Move to Zero and wait for the movement to stop. When movement has stopped, insert the pin in the zero position hole, confirming that it inserts fully. Remove the pin. On the operator panel, tap Finish twice to return to the service screen. You are now on the last step in the pre-check list which is to take a pan collimator verification shot. On the service screen, select Tube Head. Select Calibrate Collimator. The message, please attach the copper bar to the sensor before proceeding, will appear. Attach the copper bar to the pan sensor with tape and tap OK. Next, select Verify Calibration. The unit will move into position and the moving indicator will turn red. When the unit stops moving and the moving indicator is not red, take an exposure. Once the Verify Calibration procedure has completed, the Status Text area displays the Calibration Verification Successfully Completed message. Select Finish and Finish again. Select Exit. If the Status Text area displays the Verification Calibration Unsuccessful, please contact tech support before proceeding. Now that the pre-check is complete, we will begin the calibration process. The following workflow will be covered in this section. Pre-setup, parts and tools. Pre-setup, equipment. Mount calibration fixture. 
Install Calibration File. Ceph Calibration Procedure. L Axis Alignment. Calibrate Primary Collimator. Calibrate Secondary Collimator. Finalize Calibration. And lastly, take a Phantom Exposure. To begin, locate the Ceph Calibration Kit and be sure all the items shown are included. Also gather the USB drive with the calibration files for sensor and the image phantom. Next, gather the tools required. Allen wrench sizes, 2.5 mm and 3 mm, a Torx set and tape. To begin the calibration process, use the up-down control buttons to move the unit in order to access the bottom column covers then remove the bottom two column covers. If you receive an error message when using the up-down control buttons, you will need to raise or lower the unit in service screen. To do this, go to the service screen and select the column portion of the PAN device. Then select the service column, select move to lower limit, and verify that the status text displays the moving to lower limit position message. Once the unit finishes moving into the lower limit position, select Finish twice to exit. After removing the bottom column covers, use the up-down control buttons and lower the unit to its lowest height. Then remove the Ceph top cover and Ceph sensor. Also remove the Odic posts from the Ceph by grabbing them at the base so as not to break them. Very carefully, Remove the top cover from the secondary collimator by removing the two screws. Remove the wire guide screws and plate. It is important to make note of the exact position of the plug from J2 before disconnecting. Note, if it is not put back in the right direction, when the machine is put back together, the unit will not work. Now that you made note of the plug position, unplug the connector from J2. Gently pry the front cover away from the secondary collimator, being careful not to damage the bottom tabs holding the cover in place. Remove the three screws from the secondary collimator rear cover and remove the cover. Insert the small alignment pin for support and then remove the four Allen screws from the secondary collimator and then remove the secondary collimator. Next, begin the process of mounting the calibration fixture. Locate the calibration fixture from the Ceph fixture kit and mount it on the Ceph arm. Mount the calibration fixture onto the Ceph arm. Ensure it is locked in place before letting go. The latch on the calibration fixture should be fully engaged. Here you will see the latch is not engaged. Here you can see the latch popped through in the engaged position. When the Ceph is installed to the left, the heavy end of the calibration fixture is away from the column as shown in this demonstration. If you are working on a Ceph installed on the right, the heavy end of the calibration fixture is toward the column. Next, locate the sensor and plug it into the calibration fixture. Make sure it is locked in place before letting go. Set the dip switch to Ceph on the calibration fixture. Locate the CAT5 cable and adapter in the accessory kit. Plug the CAT5 cable into the plug in the calibration fixture. Make sure the cable does not drape over the sensor and tuck any excess out of the way. At the top of the Ceph, disconnect the CAT5 cable from the silver connector closest to the arm. Connect the disconnected CAT5 cable to the adapter and connect the CAT5 cable from the calibration fixture to the other end of the adapter. Using two or three pieces of tape, attach the copper bar to the sensor, making sure to cover the line at the top of the sensor. Install calibration file. To begin, locate the USB drive containing the calibration file and plug it into an available USB port on the carrier board. Select Options on the lower right corner of the operator panel. Select Calibration Files on the upper left. This window will display the calibration files loaded on the USB drive. To load the calibration files onto the system, press on the green arrow. 
The calibration files will begin transferring. When the transfer is complete, a green check mark will display. You may now select Close and remove the USB drive. Now turn the Vantage off. Wait 60 seconds and then turn it back on. Ceph Calibration Procedure To begin the Ceph Calibration Procedures, select Options on the lower right of the Vantage Touch display. Select Service on the lower left. Enter 77469 and select OK. Highlight the Ceph option by pressing on it. Select Axis Service and Diagnostics. To start the L-axis alignment, select L. And this window will display. Locate the two small zero alignment pins in the accessories kit. To align the zero pins, manually move the Ceph arm to the left or right while locating the alignment holes in the open slot of the upper Ceph board. Continue to move the Ceph arm until the two alignment holes overlap. Place the two zero alignment pins into the alignment holes to align the two holes. Note, when the pins are inserted properly, you should not be able to move the Ceph arm. This is what a zero position pin correctly placed looks like. Carefully remove the zero position pin and try not to disturb the Ceph arm position. On the Vantage Touch panel, select Set Zero Alignment. Select Yes in the confirmation window. The Ceph arm will move slightly and the message Procedure Successfully Completed will display. On the Operator panel, tap Move to Home. The Ceph arm will move to the home position. Next, select Move to Zero and wait for the movement to stop. Reinsert the zero position pins. They should fit and lock the unit into place without having to move the carriage. If not, repeat the L-axis steps. If the pins fit properly, select Finish. Calibrate Primary Collimator. Select the Calibrate Primary Collimator button. The message Attach Alignment Fixture and Remove Secondary Collimator, Attach the Copper Bar, will appear. This step was already completed during the Mount Calibration Fixture process. If this was not completed, please go back to the Mount Calibration Fixture steps before proceeding. Select OK to continue. Select the Calibrate Primary Collimator button. The unit will move into position and the moving indicator turns red. When the unit stops moving and the moving indicator is not red, take an exposure. If the Continue selector is displayed and the Center Position indicator is colored red or yellow, then the Generate and Exposure steps will need to be repeated as many times as necessary until the system displays Calibration Verification Successfully Completed. Note, if the first exposure results with the Center Numeric value colored in green and displays the message indicating that the calibration is complete, ignore this result. Select the Calibrate Primary Collimator button again. Continue to take exposures until the display indicates that the calibration is complete and the center numeric value is colored in green. Select Finish and Finish again. Calibrate Secondary Collimator. The following steps will take you through calibrating the secondary collimator. To do this, insert the small alignment pin in the hole on the secondary collimator and then attach to the secondary collimator transit with four Allen screws. Remove the small alignment pin before tightening the screws. Next, locate the medium alignment pin in the accessory kit. Place the alignment pin in the zero position hole shown and verify the alignment pin fits in between the two plates. If the alignment pin does not fit in between the two plates, follow the next two steps. Step 1 is to loosen the four Allen screws of the secondary collimator. The second step is to place the alignment pin in the zero position hole, shown above, and turn the adjustment screw until the alignment pin fits in between the two plates. When complete, remove the pin and tighten the screws. Move to the Vantage Touch display screen 
and select the Calibrate Secondary Collimator button. The message Attach Alignment Fixture and Attach Secondary Collimator, Attach the Copper Bar to the Sensor will appear. This step was already completed during the Mount Calibration Fixture process. If this was not completed, please go back to the Mount Calibration Fixture steps before proceeding. Select OK to continue. Select the Calibrate Secondary Collimator button. The unit will move into position and the moving indicator will turn red. When the unit stops moving and the moving indicator is not red, take an exposure. The software may indicate that the adjustment screw needs to be turned. Take note of the direction and amount to turn the adjustment screw. Note, if the first exposure results with the center numeric value colored in green and displays the message indicating that the calibration is complete, ignore this result. Select the Calibrate Secondary Collimator button again. Next, loosen the four Allen screws. Turn the adjustment screw about a quarter turn until the alignment pin fits in between the two plates. Then tighten the Allen screws. Once the adjustment has been made, select Continue. When the unit stops moving, take another exposure. If the result is satisfactory, the unit will not ask you to turn the screw again. Continue to take exposures until the display indicates the calibration is complete and the center numeric value is colored in green. Select Finish and Finish again. Finalize Calibration. To finalize the calibration, unplug the sensor from the calibration fixture and remove the copper bar from the sensor. Remove the calibration fixture and Ethernet cable. Plug the sensor into the Ceph arm. And then, plug the Ethernet cable back into the silver connector closest to the arm. Next, go to the Vantage Touch screen and select Finalize Calibration. The message Remove Alignment Fixture and Attach Secondary Collimator, Remove the Copper Bar, will appear. This step has already been accomplished. Select OK. Select the Finalize Calibration button. The unit will move into position and the moving indicator will turn red. When the unit stops moving and the moving indicator is not red, take an exposure. Continue to take exposures until the display indicates the calibration is complete and the level and blade numeric value is colored in green. Verify the level and blade numeric value is colored in green. Slope is not colored in red or yellow, and the system displays calibration verification successfully completed. Select Finish and Finish again. The calibration of the unit is now complete. Exit Diagnostic Mode. Take an exposure with the image phantom. Now that the calibration is complete, Locate the image phantom in the accessory kit. Reattach the optic posts, making sure to grasp them at the base. Hang the image phantom between the optic posts. The letters on the image phantom should be facing toward the vantage unit. Take an exposure of the image phantom at 66 kV and 8 ma. The box within the center squares should be relatively centered in the box. Zoom in on the rectangular boxes, and you should see the individual lines. The calibration process is now complete, and you may replace the covers removed earlier on the secondary collimator and on the cephalometric unit. For detailed instructions, see the Progeny Vantage Panoramic X-ray System Installation Guide. For more information on how to calibrate a Progeny Vantage cephalometric system, visit midmark.com or contact technical support. In the United States and Canada, call 888-924-3800. For international, call 847-415-9800. Or send an email to imagingtechsupport at midmark.com.